Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Covington City Council meeting for Tuesday, January 10th. In compliance with state law, City Council special and regular meetings are held in a hybrid format with in-person, telephonic, and virtual options for public viewing and participation. With that, we'll call this meeting to order. And Krista, if you could please call the roll. Councilmember Solkis? Here. Councilmember Porter? Here. Councilmember Hartsock? Here. Present. Councilmember Samoma. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Smith. Here. Mayor Wagner. Here. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Everybody could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Uh, next up is approval of agenda. I know that we will not have public communication from the Covington Chamber of Commerce tonight. Is there any other changes tonight, Regan? Nothing else, Mayor. Thanks, Regan. With that, I look for a motion to approve the amended agenda. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the amended agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda has been approved. We will move into our first of two public comment periods. Speakers will state their name, address, and organization. Comments are directed to the city council, not the audience or staff. Comments are not intended for conversation or debate and are limited to no more than four minutes per speaker. For attendees participating virtually, this changed, so sorry, my apologies. For attendees participating virtually, click the raise hand button in Zoom. For attendees participating by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. Once the city grants your permission to speak, press unmute if participating virtually or dial star six to unmute if participating by phone. Notice to all participants, Pursuant to state law, RCW 42.178.555, campaigning for any ballot measure or candidate in city hall and or during any portion of the council meeting, including the audience comment portion of the meeting is prohibited. With that, I will start with those listed on our sign-in sheet. Jennifer Liggett, welcome. Yeah. Say your name. Okay. Oh. Um, I'm Jennifer Leggett, the executive director of the storehouse, your local food bank, located behind Real Life Church, addresses 26201 180th Avenue South. Hello, Council. It's good to see you again. I'd like to speak on the concept of renewing your garbage and waste manage, uh, management package. And I would encourage Council to renew the Republic Services contract as opposed to looking elsewhere at this time. Nationwide nonprofits are facing limited funding due to reduced donations as a result of inflation and other social and economic factors. We're currently working under limited budgets. The higher the utilities and other bills that we have, the more we struggle to properly serve our clients and community. We at the Food Bank are an essential service to Covington, and we are tenants of real life property. A change in waste management, which could result in an increase in customer costs, which impacts Real Life Church and the storehouse, and how we are able to best serve Covington is detrimental. Republic Services has a commitment to community. They are currently established, trusted, communicate effectively, and support the city of Covington and its businesses, nonprofits, and residents. As a leader in the community, I have firsthand seen their support positively impact students, events, activities, healthcare, nonprofits, and more. Without their donations of dumpsters for the storehouse recently, I can tell you that our current shift, which occurred this past week, to an in-store, more dignified shopping model for our 1,600 clients would not have happened this past week. Their support to help us clean up and prepare our facility was vital to our success and ability to better serve our families that depend on us to fight personal and family hunger right here in Covington. I ask council to strongly consider renewing the Republic Services contract. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Next up is Laura Mosher. Welcome. Good 
Good evening. Uh, I'm the public sector manager, Laura Moser, for waste management, and my work address is 701 Second Street Northwest in Auburn. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to let you know it was a privilege for me to write and submit the proposal that waste management provided for your RFP. I worked on it, and our rates reflect current marketplace conditions. <coughs> Excuse me. I know your staff worked very hard on drafting and preparing the contract and the RFP with a consultant hired by the city. I appreciate the time some of you spent with me and your staff answering my questions and helping me to understand what was important to Covington residents and businesses. I wish the world was an easy place and whoever submitted the proposal uh, won, but I know that's not the situation you're faced with this evening. If I can provide any assistance, clarification, or additional information, I'm happy to do that. I really want to thank you for your time and consideration, and it really would be an honor for me to work with you and if you select waste management as your new service provider. And I do want to say, too, food banks, they are near and dear to my heart. We, we spend a lot of time supporting them in all the communities that we serve, too. So thank you. Thank you, Laura. John Oliveris. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. John Oliveris, General Manager with Republic Services, overseeing Renton, Kent, and the Great Covington. Uh, my work address is in Kent, Washington, and that's where our main calling site is. Um, so I was here last month to talk to you about why we didn't provide our proposal on the RFP process. We felt we would be fitting against ourselves and then look at other proposals in nearby cities and counties, they've been coming in around 30-40%. Um, but I want to reiterate, we think that option one, extending the contract with us for another two years, um, would be the best option. We'll save the community of Covington and its residents and businesses around $2 million over the, that two-year commitment. Um, I'm entering my eighth month as the general manager here at in this business unit overseeing those three cities. Uh, I'm very excited about the progress that we have made in my tenure here, not to toot my own horn, um, but we have dramatically improved missed pickups, which I know is a big concern of a lot of customers uh, over those nine months and have seen huge improvements now year over year, 22 over 2021. 20, um, our net promoter scores, which are surveys that are sent randomly to around hundred customers a month, have gone from the tail end of 21 to the first part of 22 being negative uh, to being positive the last seven months. Um, and that's just a quick recap of that. Customers are asked at random several questions about how's your service, or can we keep the site clean once we're done, but then ranking from one to 10 if they would promote Republic Services as a good vendor, a good environmental services company. Um, so nines and tens out of 10 are promoters, seven and eights are neutral, and then anything below that is a negative. So we have dramatically improved those scores in uh, my ten short tenure here. But I'm, what I'm most proud about being a servant leader is our engagement surveys that we do with our employees. We do them twice a year, March and September. Um, been doing them since I think 2016. Um, the best participation, our business unit, South Seattle, has gotten has been 80%. Here in September, we just got 94% participation, um, which for at least Republic Services, that's uh, one of the best improvements they have seen, especially at a uh, Teamster run shop. Um, with improved employee engagement, uh, many studies show comes improved safety, comes improved service, improved productivity, and just the employees coming together with the management team to grow the business and take care of our customers. So again, that is what I'm most excited about going forward. I'm hoping that we can continue that with an extended two-year extension with the city of Covington, as well as with Kent and Renton. That's all I have to share. Thank Great. you. Thank you, John. Is there anybody else in the audience that would like to address council at this time? Is there anybody online that would like to address council at this time? Please raise your hand. Seeing nobody raise their hand, we will have a second opportunity for public comment towards the end of our council meeting. Thank you all very much. Next up is 
approval of the consent agenda consisting of items C1 through C8. So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded <laughs> to approve the consent agenda consisting of items C1 through C8. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The consent agenda has been approved. Next up is continued business item number one, review the solid waste collection contract. And I will recuse myself as always and turn this over to Mayor Pro Tem Smith. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, Regan, is there a presentation? Don, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Smith and Council. Um, at our last Council meeting, uh, Council requested some additional information in regard to our solid waste contract. Um, that information was uh, brought back to you um, in the blue sheet and the attachments to that. Uh, we also have uh, Jeff Brown here with Epicenters, Epicenter Services. Um, I should I would technically say formally with Epicenter Services because mm -hmm. we actually retired the end of uh, this last year and uh, was uh, kind enough to still help us out uh, this year um, as um, Jeanette was not able to be here tonight. So uh, I won't take any more of your time with that. I will turn it over to Jeff and he will uh, kind of go over the options you have and answer any questions you might have regarding that. So with that, Jeff. Jeff Brown with Epicenter Services and good evening council. Um, now we need to queue up the 60 page PowerPoint. <laughs> well, I tried to put everything I, I could in this memo to really give you the range of options and more of the detail there. I did want to flesh it in a little bit with some of the observations and context, I think, for what's in front of you at the moment, which I think will be helpful. Um, I'll start with um, actually addressing the competitive process. Uh, this was an RFP, not a bid. Uh, so there was a qualitative uh, portion to it. And I just want to make that point. It's almost the first point I always make because people talk about bids and they actually mean proposals. But this actually was a quantitative rate and a qualitative process that we conduct, that we conducted. Um, I wasn't here when council originally um, decided to move forward with the better process, so I was not um, part of that conversation. But uh, the one thing that I do point out to cities when they're trying to decide whether to uh, go through a competitive process or negotiate a contract is that the value of a competitive process is that the city gets to set the terms of the contract. When we issue an RFP, it's a cover sheet, it's a description of the process, and it's a contract. And all the proposers provide rates based on that contract. And then in their proposal, they can go ahead and talk about what makes them special, um, talk about their enhancements they'll do above and beyond the minimum contract, and what makes their company the special sauce. And that's part of the qualitative assessment. Um, and that's actually pretty important because negotiating a contract from the ground up is a lot of work. It takes many months, if not a year. It takes uh, a lot of analysis. And the other thing is that at the end of the day, when we take a negotiated contract to council, I've been asked directly, actually in Des Moines, just this spring, uh, I think the mayor just, in a public meeting, I was sitting there and the mayor looked at me and said, Jeff, is this a good deal? And I hate that question because I actually don't know. It wasn't put on the street. There wasn't a competitive process. We negotiated the best we could. We think we've got good rates, but we don't really know. And when you're looking at a big rate increase, it's important to know. And I happen to think that a competitive process provides a lot of value that way because you put it on the street, everybody has submitted a proposal, you've got the proposals and the rates in front of you, and you can say yes. We're looking at a big rate increase, but we're also looking at, we put it on the street and we know what the market is. So I just want to provide that context because I don't know if this was part of the discussion when you, when the prior council or some of the council members here um, made the decision to go through a competitive process, but I think it's really important to kind of touch base with that. 
because that's what we were trying to achieve. Here. So we had the RFP out in the street and the proposal date came and went and so here's what happened. The ecology said, we're not gonna propose um, because they were concerned about the potential um, fact that city officials had not recused themselves to their satisfaction. Uh, Republic basically said, no, we don't want to submit a proposal um, and we want you to negotiate with us. And that's simple fun things, but you've seen the letter. Um, it basically, they did not submit the proposal. Um, and then waste management did, did actually submit a proposal. So uh, this hasn't happened really before in 30 years of doing collection contract procurements. And I can say that I haven't had this mix of issues mm -hmm. that all of a sudden kind of ended up in an odd situation. Um, so I gave some thought to where to go from here and I came up with four options. And those four options are uh, basically suspend the RFP process and extend the existing contract to the final two year extension that we negotiated back 10 years ago. Um, and then come back and do an RFP in a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, it was a conscious decision to go ahead and um, do an RFP, even though there were a couple of years left of potential extension. Uh, and part of that was taking a look at what's out there, what other companies were offering, whether there was a different, um, I guess, nexus between the, the quality of service and the rates and, and that whole conversation. Um, but at the end of the day, you still had one two year remaining contract, uh, a term extension on a very reasonably priced contract compared to what the current market is. Uh, and there's significant savings to do that. Another option is to re-release the RFP and basically say, you know, the purpose of this was to get a competitive process and to, and to have multiple proposals and that didn't work out so well. So therefore, um, we're gonna try to clarify um, some of the concerns that had been expressed and be very clear that we're not gonna negotiate outside of a, uh, of a competitive process uh, and basically see if there's a way to get two or three proposals to come in. Uh, third option, is to continue the RFP process. And that is basically take it to its conclusion. You have one proposal, waste management, you would attempt to finalize a contract, and that would be that. Um, as you've seen in the uh, attachment, that would result in a 30%, actually probably more like 35% once you put an administrator to an increase in customer rates in 2024. Whereas if you went with the first option and, in, and exercised your one second remaining two-year extension, um, you wouldn't actually be coming back and having a, a, a rate increase until 2026. Uh, and then finally, uh, you have the option of suspending the RFP and negotiating with the public. Um, and in order to do that, um, you would need to um, basically extend the con, take that second year um, extension anyway, because what I always tell cities is, you don't want to negotiate unless you have an alternative. Because I've, I've been in processes many times where I've negotiated on council direction, brought a package back to council, and council said, uh, yeah, no, let's go through a competitive process. Uh, we don't like those rates so much. And so um, you really can't negotiate unless you have a drop dead date for taking a package to council that still allows you to go through a competitive process if, you, if council directs you to. So the only way to do that would be to do that second two-year extension. We have enough time to negotiate, bring back the results of the negotiation, and then make um, uh, have a, a backup plan if that didn't go well. So those are the four options um, as I see them. I, there may be another hybrid or mixed match of the different options, but I did want to at least provide that additional context. Um, I am not going to provide a recommendation because I, I'm actually mixed. I can see pros and cons mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I didn't mention about re-releasing the RFP is that Republic did put in a public record request for waste management to propose a one hazard. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that's unfortunate, but that's what happened. And so uh, Recology did not ask for waste management proposal. So you would be in a situation where one party already has somebody else's proposal. So um, 
I think that's about what I the background I give you on this, and I can answer any questions you've got. I hope. Yeah. So yeah, what I plan on doing. So Jeff, thank you. Stay there. Um, what I'd like to do is is have the council uh, discuss, ask questions, and then um, we'll have a next phase after that. So Joe, go ahead. So this is just a kind of a clarifying what we're where we're at right now is uh, if we go with the waste management proposal, it is a thirty percent increase starting in 2024, roughly 30%, you said 35 after administrative fees. Whereas we stick, we go with um, waste management for a two-year extension, which would go, or not waste management, for public services for a two-year extension to 2026. We don't, we would be where we're at right now. What's the, if we're reading the tea leaves in 2026, when we have to have a new contract, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Are we looking at still a 30% increase or are we looking at more 40, 50 or somewhere less than that? Is there any way to predict this? Because right now I'm saying we see a 30%. We know what that's going to be when we go to renegotiate in two years and we stick with, with uh, Republic Services. That could be 40 or 50% increases. I'm just trying to see where what's the tide doing if we're looking, if we're looking at I was worried somebody was going to ask for this. Uh, well, I think all of us would. But I would say, if you can tell me what the uh, inflation rate's going to do, you can tell me what the financing rates are going to do, and you can tell me what the market price for smart recyclables is going to be, I could maybe have an educated guess. But it, it could go really right or it could go really wrong. So I, I will tell you that some other cities have seen increases more like 70 or 80 percent that have um, really good contracts, really good rates right now, unreasonably rates. You know, some of the haulers, including Republic, have some contracts where they're probably underwater on, where they're losing money on, just returning for that. And so um, we had the situation where 10 years ago when we were procuring contracts, it was incredibly competitive. Rates were coming in really low. People were virtually buying market share. Mm -hmm. And now we have a whole different environment where there's rate shocks that are happening. And, and uh, you know, it's it's a pretty serious increase. Now things could get better, markets could stabilize and the economy could kick back in in a few years and maybe it would be a lower rate increase. But if I had to just flip a coin, I'd say it would go the other way. I'd say you might end up being more like a 50% increase, but I don't. Okay. I'm sure I'll have more questions in, the, in a few minutes, but I'll let my colleagues go. Okay. Anyone else on that end of the table? How about down here? Go ahead. This might be a question for Don. He answered it months ago when we were first talking about this, but were you involved in any of the negotiation or talks with Republic Services earlier in 2021? When we oh, had brought concerns about what had been going on at the time, or was that? No, I didn't. Not in okay. 2021, I did 2012. Or 2022, yeah. I'm sorry, just yeah. last year. No. Okay, we weren't part of that. Okay. Is there a question for Don? Oh, well, if, sure, I didn't know if we wanted to let him sit down. No. So yeah. um, after, after the labor issues on top of the weather and everything that was compounding, mm -hmm. Council came on behalf of the residents to ask for you all to talk to the Republic about making some concessions or editing people's accounts and so forth. And as I recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was brought to you all that if the city opened up that can of worms, it could potentially raise our rates for other things because basically if we're going to open up the contract, they're going to open it up and look at it too. Yeah, correct? I mean, the, the basis of Again, just a brief, uh, we didn't get into a lot of details, I'll, I will mm -hmm. say that, but uh, changes to that uh, was indicated to be reflected in rates as well. So they're like, mm -hmm. okay, um, you know, changes to that contract or whatever. It wasn't like, we'll, we'll throw in these things, you know, for free or anything. It was mm -hmm. like either, there were some other pieces, they didn't get specific, but there would be like some changes that they would want to be considered as well um, in that. 
and we weren't able to really gauge what that percentage increase might be so that we could better compare apples to apples. Right, that was the, the part of going down the, the, the road of negotiation. Right, right, right. Okay. And there hasn't been any change from Republic standpoint. I hear there's a new manager and things like this. Or is that is that position any better? Um, so that uh, some of those <laughs> as we're going through this and going through the RFP process, that hasn't been something that we're like also like trying to get direction of where we're going to go. Okay. Also, we'll probably you know determine how we would go about that too based on direction. Okay. Uh, other questions? All right, Jeff, I got, I got a couple. Um, thank you, by the way, uh, for this memo. So on page two at the bottom, it talks about the current 2012 versus the RP draft for 2022 contract comparisons. And there's additional things in there. Are those the things that are in waste management's contract? So those would be the additional things that we would get. We specify that and what goes out with the RP. So everybody okay. would be providing rates based on that. Okay, so these are the things that we initially put out saying this is what we want, and those uh, are reflected in waste management's current yes. proposal. Some of these may not be, like the increased requirements during inclement weather, including hauler staff, drop boxes in our current contract. Correct. Okay. Um, I just had a question about one of the bullets. It says city acquires ownership of all carts and containers at the end of the contract. What does that, what does that mean? That's so... Um, this is one of those things where uh, there are multiple things going on. So all the, the containers and carts that get distributed <clears throat> residents mm -hmm. um, have a lot of value. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, set, a set of three carts at a, at a customer's house, $120 to $150 in value easily. And uh, it's amortized over 10 years. It's included in the rates. And so the argument I make is that at the end of the contract, a lot of them have 15 to 20 year lives if they're treated carefully. Mm -hmm. um, the rate payers pay for them. They can stay right where they are. And when we put an RFP out in the street, we will allow any contractor to use those. Okay. We don't have to recapitalize those. Um, there was a lot of resistance when I first started including those terms um, 15 to 20 years ago, but I think it's pretty much accepted now that it's understood that in each contract cycle, um, you know, when you do a distribution in the carts, they, they belong to the city. And then the city doesn't actually take ownership of them. The city assigns over, you know, the outgoing contractor. If you switch contractors, it basically just assigns them over as well. Okay, so that's helpful for me. That that means, because I'm reading waste management um, contract, uh, there appeared to be a period where we would transition to their yeah. containers. Um, but this basically would say in this contract that we can just keep, if they're in good working order, keep them and just continue to use them. We don't have the right to keep all the containers in the current contract. Okay. The current contract is a negotiated contract, not a city specified contract. And so we, it was give and take mm -hmm. 10 years ago. And, um, but the new contract is very clear. At the end of the contract, the city slash rate payers own the containers and they'll carry forward. And that actually, it's, it's probably self-explanatory, but that lowers the barriers of entry to anybody competing on a new contract because it right. decreases capital and it, yeah. it potentially decreases rates for customers yeah. in future contracts. Um, thank you. Um, on option number two, you talked about confirmed concerns raised in ecology and then send out for, a, what is it, extend the RFP time, um, see if we get additional bids. Professional opinion, what are the chances of that? I don't know. Um, I, oh, well, the ecology is here. Okay, everybody's here. Yeah. There is interest in what's going on here. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a decision that um, everybody would have to make. Republic would have to decide whether you guys were actually serious and really want them to write a proposal instead of just negotiating. And ecology would have to decide if um, they were comfortable with uh, the Republic's management statement that the other leadership would be involved in the process um, as an effective refusal. Okay. Um, and then in the blue sheet, it also mentions that there is a potential savings of $2 million if we extend the current contract 
Could you explain to me where that number comes from? I do see in the additional attachments, the rate numbers, but I see a current rate of 3.4 million and the new rate would be about 4.5 million. So right. Okay. It's, they're very okay. rough numbers. Per year. Per year, yeah. yeah. Oh, per yeah, year. So okay. two years. Sure. Got it. And it's plus or minus. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Shoot, I have one more question. Let me get this one out of my head. Um, go ahead. Darn it, I can't think of it. Oh, um, in being waste management's uh, proposal, I noticed I talked about a couple of things related to recycling plastics. I'm going to try and find it here. Do you have any indication on, it talks about not sending plastics out of country, but to in country markets? You know what those markets are, if there are any markets for that. And then finding that they're in the work I do, that the recycling markets are drying up. So I'm just curious to hear what, if any information you got on that. Well, I would say that um, what we as an industry are trying to do is move away from the period in which basically anything that was tossed in a bale and got shipped to China would be sorted. You know, they'd, they'd go through, pull out whatever they could use, and then take the rest and use it as fuel or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's not a good situation. And um, since the China market shut down, there's been a lot of re-emphasis in not only um, trying to reprocess, uh, we do that final sort as much as possible in the country so that you don't have mixed plastics to any greater detail, degree than you need. You have all the materials high graded and going to the markets they should go to. So that's one objective. And the other objective is what do you do with the rest of plastics? And um, there's a lot of work going on with converting fuel indirectly as in oil, recovering oil out of it and directing it. Um, but basically not just shipping to China anymore. And it's a work in progress. I don't think you will be in the same place in three years or five years or eight years over the term of this contract. So um, although I'm a, a, a skeptic, I am a optimistic skeptic. And I think we're actually getting somewhere. So that's pretty much all I can say. So it's kind of a, a wait and see on potential markets for recyclables. Okay. Um, I think that's one of the questions I had written down for now. Um, okay. So other questions? Any other? Yeah, go ahead, Beth. Yeah, if you don't want to thank you. Um, so <clears throat> during the RFP process, did we specify how long of a contract we'd be interested in? Like how long this rate would be for waste management, for example? Is it, is it five? Is it eight? Is it 10? It's a 10 year contract with CPI escalators. So okay. it would, we've defined the escalation method and that would be the initial year. So we're locking in basically a 2024 rate for 10 years. Other than yeah, it's not it's not a cost plus, cost plus or economic regulation contract. It's a here's your initial rate and here's how we're going to escalate. Period. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks. So what I propose is that we have the four options in front of us. Um, was there, I guess before we start on those, did anyone have a fifth option that they were talking about in the last two, three weeks? Okay. Um, last time we spoke, we agreed or had some consensus on, basically it had come down to number one or number three. Is that everyone's recollection that we were looking, considering those two? that we weren't looking at number two or number four. Yeah, I recollect ahead, like this wanting more time before we decided if we wanted to go into one of the issues. Right, right. 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 So, okay. Right. Yes. Kind of right yep. Okay, so we have these four options in front of us. I guess what I'd like to do is take everyone's temperature. <laughs> 
and see what option they are supporting. So, Bill, yeah, you have a question? So, or are you... Oh, no, I, was, I just figured we could start on my end. Yeah, so, go ahead. <laughs> um, so I have these ranked out, and option four for me is a no-go, period. I want that one to be thrown out yeah. the window. Sorry, do you have a piece of paper that I can take notes on these so I can keep track of the, the votes? I'm writing on my... I, have I just a, need a blank sheet of paper. A, this work? Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right. Thank you. Everyone jumped up. Sorry. I mean, like I pulled oh, the I fire alarm. All right, Joe. Sorry to cut you off. So. No, that's fine. Um, that's an option for it to be thrown out completely. Okay. For me. Uh, my first choice is option number three. And I state this with, I, I, I say this not because I want to see the city pay an extra million dollars a year, not because I want our customers to pay or our residents to pay so much more. It's because I have this giant fear of in a couple of years when we go through this process again, if we extend, it's not 30%. It's not a four and a half million dollar a year. It's five, it's six, it's six and a half. It's more than what this is. The saying is it's better to go with the devil you know than the devil you don't. This is the devil I know right now, as much as I don't want to pay it. I feel like that's the way we have to go because everything right now is telling me everything's going up, no matter what we want to do, because we have to build new infrastructure for recycling right now, because we spent way too many years as a country shipping it overseas, and we don't have the infrastructure here. We need to build that infrastructure, and that's going to cost money. And unfortunately, we should have been planning that 20 years ago or 30 years ago, but we finally are doing it now. Second, my second choice is option number two. And I, I would be more apt to go with option number two right now because as much as I, I think option three is our best bet, option two gives us that chance to look apples to apples. And it really tells them, it's like, hey, we asked for this once, we're asking for it again. We don't care, bid against yourselves. We want everything in writing. We want to know where we're at. We have to make an informed decision. And I, and I think keeping our, our options open that way are really good. And then if I just look at option number one, the fourth bullet point down there, None of the, it's basically saying that there's going to be a rate increase no matter what we do if we stay with Republic because it's, they're not going to do it for free. It's, it's not a service that's going to happen for free. And we have to expect that. So that's just where I'm at right now. But I, my, my rankings are options three, two, then one. And no on number four. And yeah, throw number four out. Okay. Um, so I appreciate that and like the, the way you did that. So Jennifer, I'm gonna go to you next and ask for similar thoughts. Um, number one, it's $2 million. We sit up here and talk about $30,000 in property taxes and we're seriously gonna consider 2 million? Unacceptable. We cannot pass that on to our residents. Um, 10 years ago, we had the insight to make sure we had these extensions to lock in these rates. Let's be smart and use exactly what we plan for. That's, that's it. So number, you're supporting number one. Um, and you don't have a preference on the other one? Okay. Is there any you would not support? I only support number one. Okay. All right. All right. Debbie. I support option number one um, solely. I find it difficult to justify leaving what we have as current to your pricing on the table um, to go with, yes, pricing that we know uh, would be good for 10 years, but in, in, the, in the short term, trying to explain to our residents that, uh, as you know, Jennifer said, to, to leave that $2 million um, uh, does not seem appropriate. I think that um, in looking at the other options, going back out to RFP um, raises some risk because we, we could get a proposal from Republic. It may be quite a bit larger. Um, I think the 
the other bidder, um, Ecology, had made it clear that they weren't going to participate. So I don't know that we're going to get anything further. Um, my hope would be if we go with option number one, that in two years and we go back out to RFP or for a competitive bid, that we get a lot more participation. Um, that we will we would again make it very clear what the enhancements are that we need, and um, that we'll get more participation. Um, the the only downfall I see with number one is that we're not getting the enhancements that um, I, I wasn't part of council at the time, but in talking got some uh, some insight from Regan earlier today on on how how those that list occurred, um, and we don't know if getting those enhancements in the next proposal, in the next go around, should we go uh, renegotiate with Republic that that we will get those um, without it being a significant increase. And it's been very difficult looking at the numbers. It's you know, no matter how you look at it, we're not looking at apples to apples mm -hmm. because our current rights don't include the enhancements, the, the, the bid from waste management does. Um, but we're still going to spend an additional $2 million if we if we chop it off now and, and, and switch. So that's my my vote would be. And no opinion on the other one. Right. Okay. Best. This is it's it's not an easy decision to come to. I I, I agree with everything that everybody has said so far about wanting to, to do the extension and keeping our rate locked in for another. Well, it would be until, until 2026. So theoretically, it's three and a half, the three full years, right? So that is a benefit to our residents. But I do worry that by the time 2026 comes around, which will have been two years after this RFP process was designed for, we're going to see. So I, 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 I think we all know that trying to manage our garbage and our recycling is a really expensive business. And I could even see a, our residents then getting having to get locked into a contract for 10 years that's going to be even more expensive than paying two more million dollars for the next year and a half. I mean, that's probably the biggest concern that I see with it. And I'm still concerned with the fact that we have had a really long-standing relationship with Republic. And I feel like it went fairly well up until <clears throat> maybe a year ago. And it was really just disconcerting that having that long-term relationship, I felt like there wasn't as much collaboration um, from Republic Services as somebody that's providing an essential service to our community. Garbage is a safety issue, safety and health matter. And I'm not saying that that couldn't change, but I would, it would have been really nice to see that they come to the table with a proposal that would have at least included some of those augmentations and guarantee more guarantee that our service would be interrupted, would not be interrupted for our residents, barring any major natural disaster or some weather. So I'm inclined, I'm inclined to pause and put the RFP out. In the next six months, or in the next three or four months, perhaps we have Recology now. That showed up, I guess. Well, I don't know what that means, but um, if there is more interest, so number two, I would say number two. Any um, preference for the remainder? Uh, I would be completely fine renegotiating if I thought that it would make sense to residents, but I don't. I don't know that that's really an option. So. I would say number two, and then number um, number one would be my second. Okay. No? no? Okay. <laughs> Christina. Thank you. Um, this was and is incredibly difficult. Um, first off, I want to honor waste management because you guys showed up. I mean, you really were the only ones that showed up. Um, uh, it's a little disappointing that there was opportunity for others to show up and maybe get a piece of the pie, at least have some kind of chance. Um, but that didn't happen. So 
we sit here and we're at the dais and like Jennifer said, we nitpick about 30,000. Mm -hmm. And we know that our, our residents are hesitant to even have a $20 annual increase on sales tax, even though the quality it would bring them. Maybe they're uneducated, but the point is that hasn't passed. So our responsibility to our residents, um, I, I'm just, I'm, this does not suffice for me. So to lock something in for another 10 years, we're cornered into doing that at this point. Um, I, I'm not okay with that. I would support revisiting this, situ this entire scenario in two years, mm -hmm. even though yes, it might go up, but may I just say, we cannot, we're not fortune tellers. We don't know what it's gonna look like in two years. There's been enhancements on recycling that are being worked on right now that I've, I've done a little homework on that. And we, we just don't know where we're going to be in two years. Maybe it's gonna be higher. Well, that's the, everybody else. It's gonna be higher for everybody else too. But we owe it to our residents to respect their pocketbooks. I mean, this is roughly $150 in, in a difference per, per household. And I'm not, and that's like the minimal, right? So I do support option one. Um, and my, I don't know that I need a second one, yeah. but it would, yeah, um, it would, yes, yeah. I support option one. All right, appreciate that. Um, so thanks for indulging me on this uh, conversation. I will give my preference here in a second, but I basically share the exact same concerns. It's um, do we lock in the current rates and um, prevent rate increases for at least two more years and then renegotiate in two years with the potential that rate increases could be much higher. I'm, I'm, Basically, that's that's the conundrum we have. Um, I spoke to uh, a couple uh, of people over the last couple of weeks just to get their feel on this, and they unfortunately basically said that's a real tough problem you have. <laughs> um, um, they recognize the um, the appeal of locking in the, the current rates for another two years and forestalling rate increases, but also run, uh, recognize the risk that it could be a lot higher in two years also. Um, so, you know, this is why we get the, the big bucks for being up here. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I too really appreciate waste management's uh, proposal. I, I read the entire thing. Uh, just so you know, um, I reread the other materials that were submitted uh, as well, um, and I'm I'm going to support option one as well um, for the reasons that we put forward. It's not due to any lack in waste management. Um, I think for the next two years, um, we would like to see where rates go and in, uh, continue our relationship, with, I'm speaking for myself, with Republic uh, and continue to improve the service. And then we're going to reopen the negotiation in, in two years. That's what, what I see. So, so with that tally, we had four for number one, one for number three, and one for number two. Um, is there any other discussion on that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, and I do want to say, you know, though ultimately, if we move forward with just extending, I don't think that there was uh, a misuse of anyone's time here. This definitely set the foundation for what we will view in the future as negotiations. I know I'm up here for more than two years. So, and I have a really good memory. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll remember all of this. So thank you to everyone that participated. Yeah, Joe. Uh, as disappointed as I am to be the only one to be uh, for number three, 
I will say that I do enjoy our conversations up here about these things. They are difficult topics. Uh, my, my issues were solely based mostly not on my role as a as a council member, but in my role as a neighbor, my role as a customer to Republic Services, and my role as someone who wants to make sure things are followed through on. We all ex we all knew that there was going to be price increases when it comes to a contract, basically because we are asking for more than what the current one said. And I, I think we all took that into account. We all know, see where the economy is right now. We all see where everything is right now. And I, I understand that's why we're going to go with uh, or where I, option one led the way. My big hope, though, is that in two years, when we're asking for these same things, that we have everything that we're asking for and that we have the ability to look back at what we've seen tonight and last month. We see all of those and have comparisons. That's, that's really what I'm going to ask for so that we can see where we were, see where we're at, and see where we're going. Uh, that's all I've got right now. Yeah, Christine. Thank you. Um, I also just want one final thought. Um, thank you again. We will be back. <laughs> and in two years, the position that we will be taking with Republic is going to look so different. Um, there is no extension. There is no, you know, there's no more bait um, that would pull us back into Republic. And I really do hope that these next two years, Republic does take into consideration what has happened in the last year. I do know the overhead has changed, and I'm grateful if, if that's towards, you know, a, a good a good change for Republic. Um, but, but I do want to reiterate that at least the fulfillment of the current contract that we have um, in that, you know, the missed garbages. Every, every company has their own issues. Inclement weather, I'm not even going to touch. That's inclement weather across the board. But when, when there are certain, you know, streets being missed and it's just a, well, who knows why? Um, I do, I, I really do hope that that's being taken into consideration. We were happy with the majority of it all, but the little that we continue to have issues with would appreciate that address. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, Beth. So just, just to clarify, our current contract that we extend is going through July 1st of 2026. It's not 2024. Right. So we're going to have... No, I'm, I'm, that's fine. I'm, I'm just making sure that we're aware. We're not, it's probably going to be three and a half more years before we go out to RFP again, right? Yeah. About a year before our contract ends would be about 2025. So it's the same thing as we talked about before. You need about a two year period two to years, do right? that. So just because you, just like what you've seen, mm -hmm. it's a year to go through that and then a year for, you know, at least for a new uh, vendor to come into place. Right. So we would be doing this. Uh, what, 2024? Mm -hmm. That would be uh, when we would be putting back out for an RFP, if that's the direction that council wants. Sure. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, again, I appreciate all the work that was done. I think everybody's echoed what, what the staff has done, waste management. You know, thank you for, for presenting. And I think we're very keenly aware of everybody's concerns and trying to balance everything. It's not, it's not easy to make those decisions when you have so many stakeholders in something like this. Um, so thank you for everything. Okay, so council's direction is to go with option one. You need anything else from us? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you for having me come back. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next up is new business item number two. Authorize the city manager to execute an agreement with ARC Architects for professional services related to feasibility, planning, design, and development of an aquatic recreation center. Ethan. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'll start with a little context on this agenda item. Um, uh, a condition assessment of the city's existing aquatic center was completed in 2018 with the result um, that the facility was nearing the end of its useful life cycle. The city was then successful in securing state and county grant funds to plan for a facility that would serve future generations. The feasibility study uh, or a feasibility study was completed in 2021 that evaluated an aquatic and recreation center that would be supported in partnership with the city of Maple Valley. Following the completion of the study, Maple Valley chose to discontinue uh, that partnership. Uh, that leaves us with uh, an existing aquatic center that's still um, continuing to deteriorate, deteriorate uh, which continues to uh, negatively impact operations and the costs continue to go up to, to maintain the facility. So we still have a need to find a solution to the existing facility in its current condition. With the remaining grant funds, the city is able to continue to study the feasibility for a new facility and to also reevaluate the condition of the existing facility with potentially an option to renovate it. A request for qualifications or an RFQ process was completed for the purpose of con contracting a professional con for contracting professional services related to feasibility, planning, design, and develop development of an aquatic recreation center. Four firms submitted their qualifications following an evaluation of qualifications. ARC Architects was determined to be the most highly qualified consultant to assist the city with this work. The initial scope of the work focuses on feasibility and planning services. Um, the goal of this phase will be to provide the city with information to make an informed decision to pursue either a renovation project at the existing site or a new facility at the town center site. In addition to the technical feasibility analysis, there'll be a public outreach element to engage the community about the project. Outside of this contract, we'll also be bringing in a financial consultant to assist the city with funding, with funding solutions, such as formation of a metropolitan park district. Um, and uh, this is really just to kind of introduce one, the contract, but also the project that will uh, be taking place over the course of this year, uh, should you so approve the contract. Um, happy to answer any questions about the project or the contract. So many questions for Ethan tonight. I, sorry, I'm choking here, but yeah, I just have one question. Just for clarity, you mentioned that, uh, correct, I lost the blue sheet, um, that it would be roughly, what was the cost on it? $215,000 for uh, this agreement. And then the city got grants from Department of Commerce in King County. Does that cover the entire cost for that? It does, and, and there's, um, and I don't know if the number would be, but it doesn't exhaust all of the grant funds right. either. So there would okay. still be a remaining balance to start on uh, pre-construction design costs. And if we don't approve this, we would lose those grant funds, I would assume. Yeah, th those grant dollars can't be used for anything okay. else. Yeah. Any other questions, please? Council, we should take action. Sorry. Been moved by Christina and seconded by Debbie to authorize the city manager to execute the agreement in substantial form as attached here too, with ARC architects for professional services related to feasibility, planning, design, and development of an aquatic recreation center. Christina, would you like to speak to your motion? We have been squeezing every drop of life out of that pool for years, and it is the responsible thing to do for our residents. Um, and as a city and the fact that we have funds to do that with that don't come out of the city's pocket absolutely i mean i support that okay. thank you 
Well, it, and I agree, we've got the, the grant uh, funds with which to do this. We'll get professional input on what the, the best course of action is. And I'll look forward to the public um, hearing forums, not hearings, but the public forums to get input from our residents, which is really important on where they would like to see us go with this. Thank you, Debbie. Is there anybody else wishing to speak for or against the motion? All right, it's been moved and seconded to authorize the city manager to execute the agreement in substantial form as attached here too with ARC Architects for Professional Services related to feasibility, planning, design, and development of an aquatic recreation center. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you all very much. And that brings us to future agenda items. Does council have, in looking at the future agenda, we have a meeting on January 24th, interviews um, before the council meeting, and then um, we also have our summit that Saturday right after. Does council have anything else they'd like to see on the future agenda? All right, then let's move into council staff comments. Adam. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and council and happy new year to you all. Um, just wanted to report that in 2022, crime was down ever so slightly 1%. Uh, our property crimes are down about three and a half percent, and uh, domestic violence has been up. So that's not something that we have a whole lot of control on, but um, some of them have been repeat customers, which is kind of sad, but um, we've been to a couple of places several times. Uh, also, we did a shoplift emphasis with Fred Meyer on Saturday. Uh, during that, we made six arrests for theft free. Uh, three misdemeanor warrant arrests, a felony warrant arrest, and recovered a stolen vehicle. Uh, we'll be doing one in the near future with marshals, um, and we'll continue to do these uh, as we go. And also, I forgot to add, we recovered at least $5,000 worth of merchandise in about an eight-hour spin. So that's it. Great. Thanks, Adam. Ethan? Uh, nothing more from me tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Ethan. Don. Uh, nothing else for me either. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't see Selena. Is Andrew filling in for Selena? Or okay, Andrew, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is Andrew Johnson, uh, senior planner from Community Development. Uh, we don't have anything further. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, uh, Casey. Uh, nothing for me tonight. Nothing for me tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Mark. There's no executive session tonight, and I have nothing further to add. Happy New Year. Thanks, Mark. Regan. Well, Happy New Year, Council. Uh, this was a fun meeting to, to get you going again for the, for the new year. Uh, not a whole lot to update other than I wanted to um, brief Council on what CLTC is up to, the Southeast Area Legislative Transportation Coalition. Always a mouthful. Uh, but uh, that group is, is working hard uh, this year. The governor's proposed budget uh, delayed our Highway 18 widening and safety mm -hmm. project by about five years uh, mm -hmm. over what WashDOT was requesting once we were able to secure the funds during last legislative session. So that is our target uh, this, this legislative session. Um, we have several uh, CLTC members testifying at a hearing this week, and uh, all the members will be meeting with members of the House and Senate Transportation Committees uh, in the next couple of weeks, and we'll really be pushing this. It's been a wonderful group and very successful. So hopefully we can get that um, uh, project back to the original timeline that WashDOT was, was requesting. Other than that, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Regan. Question on it. What was the governor's thinking on that? Good. So he prioritized operation and maintenance over new projects. Uh, our, our response to that is this is a safety project. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most deadly stretches of road in the state of Washington mm -hmm. and needs to be taken care of. You might even argue it's a maintenance project too. Yeah, you, know. you can, but he did yeah. so, uh, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Regan. Krista. Nothing for me tonight, thank you. Thanks, Krista. I'll start with Joe. Ooh, oh, wow, yeah. it's a new year. Wow. 
So first, I want to say I, I like the new information added on the for public comment. Uh, if for any other reason, it just gives Jeff more things to read. Uh, <laughs> but it it, do, it is nice. I think it does give some clarification. So I, I thank the city for that. I thank staff for that. Uh, secondly, I had notes here. Um, as a parent of a student of a kid in this city who has somehow fallen in love with swimming, where he had never gone swimming before, and then got super excited and said he wanted to go swimming. I think the reason was he said he wanted to learn how to fish. And I told him, well, he has to learn to swim first because he's about 40 pounds and a good sized bass is pulling him into the water. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, sure. And he started swim lessons this week and he had the biggest, cheesiest grin on his face. So I want to thank Parks for the swim lessons because he's already looking forward to this Saturday's lesson. Uh, that being said, I am thankful that we offer these swim lessons because if any other reason these kids may never see water again after they're done with swim lessons they could wind up somewhere where they need them and it's a wonderful wonderful safety thing to have uh secondly on the 28th we have our summit after the summit if you are all so inclined the battle of 272nd kent lake versus kentwood basketball is going on the Kent Lake and Kentwood C teams will be up at Kentwood, so it's a really easy drive for us. Varsity girls and boys basketball and JV will be at Kent Lake after the summit. So I think it would be a good idea for us to go and support our kids out there playing basketball. Uh, this is coming from a guy who wrestled <laughs> all through high school, and I think that would be fun for us to be there. So just a thought for after summit activities for us. That's all I've got today. Thank you. Jennifer. I do not have anything tonight. Thank you, Jennifer. Debbie. Um, that you might have had this to talk about too, but I just wanted to announce that on, the, on January 25th, the Covington Rotary um, is opening up um, invites for community leaders to come and hear Mike Pelletrati, I believe is the right pronunciation. He's the Washington State Treasurer. Um, I had the privilege of hearing him speak to the Kent Rotary. It was very insightful. Um, he will probably talk again about what he's doing to try and open up banking um, for the cannabis industry. Um, so I'm hoping he'll talk about that again. He's, he's very passionate about it. Um, so hopefully um, those of you that can attend, I don't know if we're having it at our usual location, say, um, Affinity at 5.30 p.m. Um, and then also speaking of affinity, that is, this week, I see that the city is hosting their resource fair or resource event there. Um, I will personally sit at the storehouse table for the, the duration of the time because I'm, I'm passionate to, to see how we're rolling out our resources to our seniors. So I think it'll um, give me a chance to get some uh, feedback from our senior citizens. And it's just, I'm thankful that the city thought to put it there. So thank you. Oh. Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, uh, again, thanks everyone for the, the um, thoughtful, um, deliberative conversation. I really appreciate everyone taking the last two weeks to seriously consider um, uh, the discussion on solid waste uh, management in Covington. It, it showed, and I really appreciate everyone's professionalism on that. Uh, there's been no RFA meeting since the last time we met. Um, so the next one is uh, a week from tomorrow. We'll have an update next time. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had. So thank you. Thanks, Thanks John. Everyone again. Yeah. Another sorry, rotary update, but uh, on February um, 8th, our first um, meeting for the public, we are also um, having. Uh, Governor Inslee's transportation policy uh, advisor presenting to the club, again, open to officials or anyone else in the community that may want to hear. Where is that? And that is on Wednesday, February 8th, 5.30 p.m. Affinity. So trying to get more of those folks into the community in different, in different manners. Um, looking forward to city action days in Olympia this month. Uh, summit too. Mm -hmm. so, nothing else for you on this front, but 
Thank you, Beth. Christina. Thank you. This is such a treat. I usually go first and I'm caught off guard. So thank you. Um, first off, 1% down is better than 1% oh. up. So yay for us. I'll take those little wins all day long. Um, and both my husband and I, first him alone, then us together, were at Fred Meyer probably twice on Saturday. And yeah, he goes, <laughs> and the second time we get back, like two of the arrests happened while I was in at Fred Meyer for a very short time. It was just like, he was like, what is happening? So good job. Hats off to our police officers. They're doing amazing. I don't like to see people arrested, but I don't like to see crime either. Um, and uh, the storehouse has a totally different layout now, which is really cool. I think it's going to be incredibly effective instead of having food shuttled to cars, we're actually having passengers. Can I kind of saying we? Um, we're having passengers uh, come out and choose their own food. It's so dignifying. Like the, the they didn't even understand at first um, how, how and what, but we had one weekend now and I think next weekend's gonna be smoother, but it, it, was, it was really cool to have them choose their own products and just the dignity in that. Um, oh yeah, happy new year to everyone. Um, I'm convinced that 23 is going to be my best year yet. Um, don't mind the aging, but you know, still best year yet, more wisdom with aging. Um, it's an honor to be up here with you guys, as always, especially during the, hard moments where it's we we are pushed into a corner and we have to make a decision with nothing um so i i just i'm constantly um i i think about this often how proud i am to be part of a team like this thank you that's all for me thank you christina um i had our first i attended our first sca mayor's meeting uh, this week and it went well. So we're going to be discussing getting together in person at some time, but still virtually. And that's all I have for tonight. I just appreciate each and every one of you for all that you do for our city. Um, Council members and staff, so thank you. With that, we'll go into our second public comment period. Speakers will state their name, address, and organization. Comments are directed to the city council, not the audience or staff. Comments are not intended for conversation or debate and are limited to no more than four minutes per speaker. And for Joe, adding, for attendees, <laughs> I would think that you wouldn't want me to keep talking. <laughs> but for attendees participating virtually, click the raise hand button in Zoom. For attendees participating by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. And once the city grants your permission to speak, press unmute by participating virtually or dial star six to unmute if participating by phone. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to address council this evening? Laura, welcome. I just want to officially say thank you. I know your decision was tough and um, I appreciate everything that you've done and waste management will be here when you're ready to go into an RFP again. So thank you. And I wish you well. And I'd be happy to give you my card if I could ever answer any questions for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Laura. Anybody else in the audience wishing to address council? Is there anybody online? Nope, there is nobody online. Mm -hmm. So with that, we have no executive session. This meeting is adjourned at 8.13. Thank you all very much.